be a king of God, one must be so spiritually. The Egyptians might have called it a king of Ra. So I incorporate my perspective of Egyptian religion with my take on um, the Ikenga cults of the Igbos and their martial art traditions, as well as ultimately my Christian perspective. Okay, grace per perfecting nature, including the nature of the martial artist that means well, whose moral code is consistent with Christian and sacred morality. So I'm taking these intense spiritual aspects of Igbo culture, which is entirely my right, you know, and um, perfecting them with Christian philosophy and Christian truths and values. So when you see the um, Taekwondo and the Kung Fu, you see a lot of these martial arts, which are interesting, uh, and they rely greatly on forms and stances. And a lot of these people I've come across, you know, it's like they can't think outside that box. Part of why they were so offended when Bruce Lee made a similar argument to the one that I make. Um, but mine is more based in philosophy and spirituality than uh, fighting applications, uh, first and foremost. You know, the Zulu warrior in motion, the sun in motion, the Ra versus the sun at the point which it settles, returning to balance, right? Settling that spiritual energy, kind of like when you see a sun, uh, the sun um, going down behind a mountain, you know? It is that point in that area in which it settles versus its journey in its entirety in glory. And that is one way I take it. So it is the Ebo leopard in motion and the build that it has and the spiritual strike that it has. So when it is not resting and it is on the hunt, you know, it sits there wanting to move. There's no conscious balancing the motion of the leopard. There's no conscious balancing, hey, I need to return to this balance. There's this natural, it's time to spring and I'm being patient and the spiritual force that it creates so there's a difference in cultural philosophy uh, and religious Igbo philosophy uh, between that and Buddhist philosophy and, and different you know philosophies that go into other martial arts from other races. And there's also you know religious differences from Christianity as well. A king of Ra, indeed. So we look at Omanani and Anna and the different aspects of Igbo religion and proper custom and not blood shedding, no not shedding blood. If it's worth fighting for, then it's worth killing for. You know, anything else is paying homage to Lucifer, right? Why should we resort to violence and injure each other and mutilate and brutalize God's image and God's creation like somebody taking shots at the picture of Jesus on the wall or something um, if it's not for God's purpose? So if it's worth fighting for, it's going to be something to do with God, and it's worth killing for. You know, my accompanying morality, for instance, not allowing you to break into my home and attack my family. And so if I was to blow you away with an elephant gun or something, right, it's consistent with sacred morality. There's no justification for the sport of mutilating God's image, you know, from a true Christian perspective and a true Igbo martial artist, the king uh, cult's perspective. So the disruption of the spirit of the people going in the Christian direction versus the disruption of the spirit of the people going in a Buddhist direction when some dark spiritual event occurs. So there's a lot of different aspects and outcomes um, that come with accepting mainstream uh, perspectives, you know, bootlickers, and uh, accepting other martial arts systems and ways of thought, ways of thinking. Right? The reason why they came up with that system was a direct result of their philosophy. And they came up with a slightly different system because that is their path. That is their philosophy. You know? And in the absence of a profoundly true spiritual reason for you to switch your philosophy or change it and make it theirs, why should you?